John Gresham is known as a master of the legal thriller. He has, look at that, 30 consecutive number one New York Times fiction bestsellers. He sold more than 300 million copies of his books worldwide, and now he's out with his 25th legal thriller. He calls it The Rooster Bar. It explores a world of for-profit law schools for a group of students who learn that their school is owned by a shady hedge fund operator. John Gresham joins us at the table. This is the second time in a year, as Nora pointed out, two a year for you, Mr. Gresham. Two's too many. One's, two's en too one's many? enough, yeah. Next year, just one. When they're like this, I don't know if two's too many, but let's I know. Talk, when they're yeah. good, keep them yeah. coming. <laughs> let's talk about the rooster bar, because it, the, the genesis was, as I understand it, you read an article in The Atlantic, and you thought what? That made you think, this is this It was is an investigative here. piece by Paul Campos. It was published uh, three years ago in The Atlantic, and I somehow stumbled across it. And I was not familiar with for-profit law schools, and I was not really familiar with the student debt crisis. And the article really opened my eyes, and it was, uh, it was a great piece, but it was also a troubling issue. And I started researching, and the novel was quickly born from that. You know, it's interesting, as you point out, the American Bar Association says there are currently six for-profit law schools in this country with accreditation. One of them is the Charlotte School of Law, which recently closed. There closed, are problems. Closed in August, yeah. Mm -hmm. They had problems for a long time. Uh, not all the schools are shady. So, uh, yeah. there, there are a lot of success stories from these schools, but... Uh, the the levels of debt that these students incur, and and they then they pass it off as in in the form of high tuition to people who are making a profit, and that just struck me as being wrong. Mm -hmm. And the high number of the debt too, I was surprised. And I assume that you researched those as real figures: two hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars, one hundred ninety-one thousand dollars. Well, Gail, my research is always shaky. Uh, don't <laughs> don't don't believe, don't believe everything you read, okay? Yeah. But no, those numbers are not far off. You can borrow seventy-five thousand bucks a year uh -huh. for three years to go to law school. Uh, Forty thousand, fifty thousand goes to the for tuition goes straight to the to the owners of the law school. Yeah. Uh, and you can borrow twenty thousand bucks a year to live off of. So that's seventy-five thousand dollars a year you can borrow for e easy. Without giving easy the money. whole novel away, though, to tell people you you essentially have a number of students in the book, and they're facing a mountain of debt. And they go after the hedge fund operator who's making a profit off for this. Revenge. Well, they can't. They can't find jobs, which is fairly accurate with a lot of these schools, a lot of these graduates. Uh, their prospects of passing the bar exam are rather dim. Mm -hmm. And the school isn't a great school. It's not a great school. No. Well, it's Foggy Bottom Law School. <laughs> I mean, how about that name? <laughs> What's well, a real name? Foggy Bottom. I, yeah. 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 I didn't make that up. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 No. There's a Foggy law school at Foggy Bottom, 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 by the way. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's a very good law school. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, are you going to Princeton tomorrow to go look at the F. Scott Fitzgerald manuscripts? Camino Island came out back in June. I was here. You folks had me. We had a good, a good visit. The book came out, and uh, we had not contacted Princeton before the publication. This book was about that. It was about stealing the manuscripts from the Princeton Library. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go there. I didn't see the library. I disclaimed all of that. I don't know. Normal research. I don't know what, yeah, my normal research. <laughs> and you didn't I, tell them you were doing it. I wanted to, but I was advised not to, uh, not to warn Princeton that this book was coming, and I didn't. Uh -huh. There's nothing, nothing actionable. Like they can't do anything about it. So I didn't warn them. And about a month or so after the book came out, I got a very nice letter from the head librarian at Princeton saying, uh, we love your books, and we love this book. Why don't you come visit us? Yeah. So I'm going tomorrow to see the Fitzgerald manuscripts wow. and to speak on campus. So it's looking forward to it. Okay. That's not Very something good. that people get to do. Can I point out in your books you never have a preface? I actually like that. Why do you not have a preface in any of your books? Well, uh, I just don't like them. Uh, normally, they don't, they don't work. Uh, a, a prologue or a preface, when you start, it's, it's sort of a gimmick that a lot of writers use to do something really dramatic to get your attention, to get you sucked in. And then they move away from it and leave you hanging. Yeah. And that's just not the way I tell stories. I like to start with, you know, the first chapter and end of chapter 40. And uh -huh. no flashbacks, nothing fancy, just a direct storytelling. You know, we just had Jeff Fager here. Mm -hmm. And 60 Minutes, which is investigative reporting, is about telling a story. Mm -hmm. You tell fictional stories. Mm -hmm. What's at the heart of a good story? Uh, well, conflict, uh, suffering, injustice. Um, Romance. Well, I don't do sex very well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sex is good, John Gresham. <laughs> Most men cannot write sex, okay? Is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, true? oh, yeah. Most men cannot write good sex, okay? <laughs> and I, I, I tried one time years ago, Maybe and I showed it to my wife, and she fell out laughing, okay? <laughs> okay, we're, we're hitting a hard wall. Okay. Okay. Said, Why are we talking Gresham. about sex? I don't Thank like you so much. Said, Let me try. Hard wall here, guys. Okay. Sorry. Congratulations to the Tar Heel for being found not guilty. Rooster Bar is on sale today. You're watching CBS this morning.